my shorts. Welcome to the Dave Lee Down Under Podcast. I am, of course, your host, Dave Lee, and this is episode number 55. Um, you didn't look at the... No, I didn't, I didn't check it out. Hang on. Oh, no. He's dropped the ball already, like oh, four weeks in. I dropped it. This is our very first kitchen table <laughs> edition of the Dave Lee Down Under Podcast. So everything's, uh, um, everything's out of order a little bit. We are, of course, um, we have, of course, finished up with the video podcast for now. Uh, so we're um, not even recording in the regular room anymore. We are now out, li- quite literally, at the at the dining room table, doing this one. And um, so I don't. So sorry to spoil the illusion to those who are used to watching the video podcast. You're probably picturing us on the set or the lovely. No, we're just sitting here at the at the dining room table now. That's how it's going to be. Until we film uh, the the next one, hopefully we'll bring some video back, from uh, some video ones back in the future. But for now, we're seeking just the audio. So this is episode fifty five, which is Snakes Alive uh, fifty five. So stupid. Wasn't worth waiting for, was it? No, it was crap. It was a bit shit. <laughs> yeah, you can of course join the podcast every single Monday. Is that it? There's no alternate ones this week. I was just checking that. I don't think there is. Oh, what a shame. No. no. Just makes me want snakes a lot. Those lollies. Ooh, yum! Snakes alive, lovely. Oh, we've got some in there too. Oh yeah. Uh, you can of course join us every single Monday on the podcast. It goes out on all the major podcasting platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Audible. What all of them? All of them. All of them. Yeah, as well as like the small ones as well. Jeez, it's pretty good. Uh, it's also available on YouTube in like a sort of semi. Version. It's like just audio with a little picture over the top. <laughs> but you can still check it out on YouTube if you're used to consuming your media that way. That's and the if way it's the only way you can. Get exactly it. right. So it's still going to be on there, just not with the visual element. For now, uh, we have, of course, migrated those versions of the podcast over to the second channel, like at the beginning of the year. So we would still appreciate follows and watches and everything over there yep. and, um, and, and all that stuff. So get- when we bring that video portion back one day maybe who knows yeah we've got the subscribers and the and the income to support support us <laughs> well yeah exactly right uh you can find me on on youtube the regular channels dave lee down under i'm on twitter i'm on instagram letterbox there's links in the description of every single podcast and if you want to write on the show you can shoot an email at dave lee pod at gmail.com uh, if you're listening on the podcast platforms please leave a review and a rating it helps only good ones only the good ones don't help. like bad ones no way you know how I get just head over there yeah. curl up in the corner yeah rocking backwards and forwards yeah <laughs> <laughs> something like that gives <laughs> <laughs> me a complex there you go mm, takes so, a bit to give me a complex well yeah I'd like someone getting on there and going you suck <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we are. Uh, this is the first show without video. So we are recording in, as I said, a different room. We've re- we've realised just after we set up that the um, uh, acoustics, the acoustics in here is a bit different. It's a bit echoey because it's just in the middle of the wide open house now. So we don't know how this is actually going to come out sounding. So we might, I don't know, once we listen back. Uh, deal with it. <laughs> you deal with that. Well, we'll listen back and if it's really bad, then we might. I'd move Do it somewhere next else week, next week. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll figure it out. Some teething issues sort of getting used to this new... new well, you know the worst part is? What's that? I'm sitting directly opposite the table from you. I'm going to look straight at you. Oh, yeah, no, it's the worst. <laughs> Terrible. Fuck it's hell. awful. <laughs> awful. I hate it. I don't mind just like looking at the corner and you don't have to make eye contact. <laughs> um, well, we've been up, but we're also trying to tighten the show up as well. So yep. we're making a few changes. We're hoping to get this show... Down to about an hour and a half every week, if yeah, possible. Easy. We're going to trim some stuff. A few segments are going to go. Some segments are going to kind of rotate throughout the weeks. Um, we're going to condense some segments that are usually really long. We're going to make them a bit shorter. Uh, stuff, you know, etc. You'll find out as you go along. But we're trying to make just a, a more kind of concise, concise, less rambly, concentrated, and concentrated, 
and more accessible podcast, I think, mm. particularly if we're trying to aim to get out to more people. Yeah. Because those two hours might be a bit of a put off for, for some. Yeah, I don't watch them. No, me either. <laughs> Not a two hours. No. <laughs> well, I do hours. I don't, well, I watch hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I, 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 yeah. So There are a couple <clears throat> I sort of have a bit of a listen to, but. Yeah, but I get it. I get the idea of just wanting to skip through something that's that long. So mm. we're trying to get them down. Anyway, we are rambling again. Yep. So let's get on with uh, the show. I mean, what have we been up to this week? Not a lot. Really nothing. Sweet. You can nothing. Sw- you can swear. Sweet stuff. We have room, moved room, but it doesn't mean we're now family oh, friendly. Right. Yeah. So there's no kids around. <laughs> no. Your mother's not around. No. It's good. <laughs> um, yeah, re- literally nothing this week. It's been it's been enough. No, bugger all. Been working flat out. It's been doing uh, a bit of painting around the place and yeah. that sort of shit. We've had some parcels arrive. Oh, finally! Fucking parcels. We had these two parcels I was supposed to get here two weeks ago. Come on, last out of our week, house yesterday. Yeah, well, the, we had these two that were supposed to come last week together. They were supposed to arrive together, and then they arrived together yesterday. And then there was another one that was supposed to come the day after last week which is apparently set to arrive today. So we figure that OzPost is probably about a week, a week and a half behind, like, to the dot. Mm. So they, that, book, that book of mine that came, that yeah. wasn't supposed to come till today, was it? No, but that came through Amazon, so sometimes they're a bit quicker. Uh, it's just OzPost that's clogged up. Amazon's pretty Amazon's pretty good, though, because yeah. they get out of the car. They get just random people drive around in little cars now. Mm. So just send them around everywhere. Well, I've just, I've just ordered good. something for my mother. Oh, she's yeah. been in hospital and... Mm. Well, that sort of stuff. She's been there for six weeks, and she comes home tomorrow. And uh, she wanted a uh, like a uh, sun lounge type thing. Oh, right. She can lay. She can lay on in the lounge room and stuff. So I ordered that. So it'll be interesting to see how long that takes to get there. Well, yeah, because that'll be Oz Post, won't it? Or was that Amazon? Um, no, it was a. It wasn't Amazon. It was a standalone website. Oh, interesting. I won't mention the name of it. No. <laughs> They're not paying us to. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's called a place called My Deal. Right. She she found it and she wanted it and I thought, oh, okay, well, I'll order it for you and see when it gets it. They say three to five business days. Well, we'll see. If so it goes, we'll uh, particularly if it goes through OzPost, but who knows? So it's I all fucked it up. Um, my USPS parcel, mm. still no sign of that. So yeah. I don't know what's going on. Yep. We'll keep you updated on that as it goes. Yep. But Amazon's been really good. Amazon's fine because they have their own delivery. All the, um, most of like the couriers, like whatever, like the courier companies, they've been pretty much. You know, yeah, yeah. spot on, but it's just Oz Post and their fucking Star Trek. Oh, fucking Star I got on the chat the other day. I was like, can you please give me an update on this order? They're like, uh, it's Star Trek order. We can't give an update. I'm like, it is, you, Star Trek is Oz Post. And he's like, yes, correct, but you need to contact Star Trek. So we contacted Star Trek and I got back to us. They were like, oh, you, you need to contact Oz Post about this. Mm. So another example of them not yeah. wanting to take responsibility. Because it comes with an Oz Post. Yeah. Tracking number. And then it arrived with OzPost. It didn't come by Star Trek. It came through OzPost. Anyway. Fucking OzPost, I tell you. They I are know. fucking hopeless. Disaster. All right, so that brings us to... <laughs> no, not that. <laughs> I know you were laughing at us. <laughs> Holy I'm shit. laughing at you because this has been one cost of... Cut it out. <laughs> Cut it out. I know. I'm all over the place. It is time for... What a there we go. Good picture. Yeah. <laughs> so much fun. Jeez, I just forget it. I just like gone. I completely forgot the board was in front of me. That I had buttons to press. Well, we're just not in the same environment. It I know feels, it's like it's, it's thrown. It's different. Thrown, it's thrown it out a little bit. Our, our setup's different. I got the thing in front of me instead of to my side. Anyway, so I've been watching this week again. Actually, not really a lot this week. Watch if you've got a couple of catalog titles in a couple of mornings this week. I've had to do like cartoon news in the morning, so that's a write off for my morning movie. So it's disappointing. I want to try this week called Ida. Um, which is a Polish film. It's the first Polish movie I've ever watched. Is it not Ida? I think it's Ida. I thought it was Ida, mm. but the way they pronounced it in the film was Ida. Could no, be the other way around. No. I think it was Ida. I don't know. Um, Ida, Ida. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> For God's sake. I really need that, like, <laughs> sound effect. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, this is the fir- Umbrella Entertainment's just released this on Blu-ray for the first time. It's a film from 2013. It's the debut title in their world cinema range, which is really cool. Um, they're going to start bringing out a lot more kind of foreign film, mm. which is awesome. I'm very excited about that. Um, I really like this one. I think you'd like it too. Now that we've popped your um, subtitle, Cherry. <laughs> 
Um, no, this is actually really good. No, I just got to be in the mood for subtitles. That's all. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that, and it is hard. And, and you, and I'm a slow reader. Yeah, I'm yeah. not. A, I'm not a fast reader. Well, it depends on the language. Like, say, if the language yeah. is really fast. Yeah. Polish, I found, was actually quite quite slow language, so it was nice and easy for a morning. Usually, yeah. I can't watch like subtitly stuff in the morning or later in the evening because my brain's just fried. But this was easy to watch. Um, but it's also it doesn't have a lot of dialogue. Which helped as well. Mm. It's also a very visual movie. I think, particularly someone with a more visual mind, photographic mind, you really enjoy it. Just the way they they use a lot of negative space. Oh yeah. So like some of the, it's just framed like unlike anything you've ever seen before. It might be like the people are in. That's the door actually talking <laughs> about Oz Post. <laughs> you've probably heard that. So he's going to go. He's going to go get get the parcel there. All right, so you're back. You got him. We've got a couple of parcels, yep. which is good. One's mine, one's for my mother. I believe I also have another one coming today that came from a different Ozpost warehouse, Depot. 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 Yeah, and then there's one coming from Amazon as well. So uh, we'll see what happens there. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Anyway, as I was saying. <laughs> oh, I'm out of breath now. Yeah, as I was saying. Yeah, this film, it's like they might frame it like there's two people in the frame, but they just take up like the lower kind of, even like even the third of the frame, right oh, in the yeah, middle, yeah. and then the rest of it is just like dead space. It's so weird. And there might be like might be just someone down like in the corner of the frame, and the rest is Sounds it's like so classic weird. rule of thirds. Yeah, yeah, but it's like yeah, but they but then they use heaps of dead space. Yeah, yeah. for almost no reason. Yeah, but it's really good. I really like like visually, it was very good. It's really quite a common thing in stills photography. Mm. Negative yeah. space and um and using and you find find a lot of film that is. Where the um, director of photography is mm. is a stills oh, photographer, yeah. they'll they'll do that a bit. Yeah, um, but yeah, I'd never really seen it. I guess done like this in a movie before. It's very very weird. But a lot of foreign filmmakers do tend to break um, break traditions because most of most of what we know from most of what we know of cinema was developed in in America. So a lot of the foreign filmmakers tend to purposely yep. break the rules yep. to be a little bit more... To uh, be different. To be different. Yeah. And especially when you think of like the French New Wave stuff, they just were just breaking the rules yep. typically to be rebels and be yep. like, this yep. is our style. And this is the first time I've really seen anything like this, particularly a modern thing anyway, but it was really, really good. I really liked that one. There was, <clears throat> there was actually an American film, and I can't remember the name of it, and I think it was George Clooney. The American was it the American? Yeah, I think it was the yep. Ameri- I think it was the American, and they they used a lot of that that negative space and rule of thirds and and I think the director director of photography that was actually a stills was, photographer. Yeah. I think I have a feeling uh, that may have been. I think it was a guy, but I think yeah, probably. I think it's a guy by the name of Anton Korb. I can never pronounce his name. Uh, Anton Korbjian. Oh, yeah, he directed it. He wasn't just the director of photography. He was the director. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he did a lot of stuff. He did like this. Uh, U2 did like a, a music, did a bunch of music videos for one of their albums, one of their later albums. Mm. And then they cut them all together and made like a film out of it. And he did that one sort of around the same time as the American, actually. Uh, and that's the same thing, sort of framed very different. Yeah. But, um, well, I remember watching that and just thinking how beautifully shot it was mm. and – Really well framed, and yeah. but obviously I'm looking at it through a photographer's eyes. Well, yeah, that's Probably, what, well, that's what I'm saying. You'd mm. appreciate this either, but that's it's on a different, like, completely different level. Because if you had made a Western movie like the way this film was made, there's no way you'd get that released on oh, like a wide scale, anyway, mm. like the American was. Yeah, so that's interesting. I also watched this week um, Super Mario Brothers. This is the film from. Uh, Early nineties. Um, is that the one with um, the short Bob Hoskins? Bob Hoskins, yeah. yeah, as Mario and John Leguizamo as as uh, Luigi. <laughs> um, it's it's traditionally. Con- they had, sorry, they had they had John Leguizamo on the morning program. Yeah, uh, earlier in the week. Yeah, and they were actually speaking about that. But Mario, yeah, they're speaking about yeah. Mario, yeah. Yeah, it's it's commonly considered one of the worst movies ever made. Yeah, he's got a four point one on IMDb. He, he loved it. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Yeah. I remember watching this. I'm not going to say it's really good 
because it's a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. But it's so fucking fun. Yeah. And I remember watching it as a kid. I probably saw it maybe once as a kid and I really liked it. And Umbrella has just released this on Blu-ray because they put out a lot of cult shit. Yep. Um, so this is a movie that's really loved by a lot of people because it's just a cult film. But more general audiences say it's like, you know, this is the biggest piece of shit ever made. And it is. It's terrible. Yeah. But it's really fun. And I can see what they're trying to do with it. It's like so different to the movie, uh, to the video games. Like Mario talks like this. He's like, um, <laughs> I'm Mario. I'm from, I'm from Brooklyn. It's me, I'm Mario. Yeah, it doesn't huh? talk like that. No, no it's, just like an, it's just like Bob Hoskins fucking putting on like an Italian-American accent <laughs> and John Leguizamo's there. It's real kind of, I actually, I have a feeling maybe at this point, maybe that Mario voice hadn't been established. It must have been. I don't know, because there was a, there was a cartoon series from like the late 80s where Mario just like talked like the Mario. Oh, really? Sort of thing, yeah. <laughs> and it was very similar. So it was like a more literal take on it. It's just, it's really fucking weird. But I had a lot of fun with it because it's just dumb. And this was actually made by Disney. Disney did this under their Hollywood Pictures label. Um, and they released that over in the States. But over here and in the UK, it was released through whoever co part D- Disney did a lot of this back in the kind of 90s and 80s where they would co partner with another studio. And Disney would retain rights in the US and the other studio would have the rights overseas. So Popeye, that one with um, the one with Robin Williams is another example where they co-produced that with Paramount. Oh, Paramount right. retained rights overseas and Disney yep. had it. So yeah. so Popeye was just released on Blu-ray over in in no, actually no, America had the rights. Paramount had the rights in America for Popeye, and they've just put the Blu-ray out over in America. Oh right. But yep. over here in the UK K, uh, Disney was the distributor. So oh. all the DVDs have Disney branding on it. God, that's all complicated. It's really it? complicated. Flight of the Navigator was one. They paired up with a lot of like like independent studios. Mario was an example of that. So there's no chance you'll get Mario on a Blu-ray over in America, but there's this new release from Umbrella. They somehow secured the rights from whatever this independent company was. I think there's a release over in the UK as well. But, yeah, I had a lot of fun with it. I thought it was enjoyable. Mm. Really, just I want to have a bit of a just fun. I, I would probably, I would actually, a bit, of, bit of fun. I would probably watch it again because it's so fun. It's just dumb too. Some of the time you're just laughing. Like, it's so stupid. Um, Dennis Hopper is in it as well. Yeah, as just looking at that as King Cooper, aka Bowser. Don't refer to him as Bowser in the film, but he's he's Bowser. And it's, it's more like a more literal kind of supposed to be like a gritty. If you think of like Disney did a lot of stuff like this at the time, Dick Tracy. The Rocketeer yep. is that really kind of high, heightened kind of over the top, but tried they like tried to ground it, yeah, yeah, yeah and it just comes off as just really just yeah. crazy and dumb and over well, the I top. Think Tracy was terrible, yeah. Well, see, I wouldn't mind watching that back too. I reckon that'd be fun. Yeah, maybe. I reckon that'd be that same kind of. It's been a while since I reckon that with that same kind of just like this so shit that it's fun. Yeah, maybe that'd be a huge cast. Warren Beatty was was Dick yeah, Tracy, Madonna, Madonna yeah. I think so. she, had, she had an affair with him at the time, didn't she? Probably. I think? Fuck, who knows? <laughs> Knowing both of them, really. <laughs> exactly. I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure they were dating during that film. They might, I think they might have been, yeah. Uh, so that was it for catalogues. I watched another one, an Australian movie, absolute dog shit. Like an <laughs> old thing from like the 80s. It was terrible. I'm not going to talk about it. It's, really, it's just crap. Uh, but new, newer films. We spent most of last weekend re-watching stuff that we'd already watched. Yeah. Uh, we re-watched Black Widow. Uh, because I got the Blu-rays or the 4Ks recently, so we rewatched Blank Widow. So our second viewing. Yep. What had you feel held up on a second view? Um, I'm undecided whether I actually enjoyed it or not. Yeah. I mean, I enjoyed like the overall, f- or as in uh, on a second viewing experience. Um, second viewing. Because mm. I enjoyed it the first time. Yeah, watched yeah. it. Really enjoyed it. Um, but maybe that character sort of doesn't really grab me. Mm. Like some of the other Marvel characters, mm. I, 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 fe- I, fe- I felt I felt more in tune with the, her sister. Yeah, Florence Pugh's character. Yeah, she's like she's the best part of the movie. Yeah, I felt more in tune with her in, during this watching. The first watching it was more about Black Widow. Yeah, and her story. But this time I watched it more from mm. from um, what's her name, the sister, Elena. Elena's. But we've come to know her more now view. too, Florence Pugh. We've watched quite a few of her movies she's since. She's fantastic. She's so good. She's so damn good. Yeah. yeah. 
and there's something underlying about her personality. I think it's, that comes through in just about every. I role think it's she a has. British thing. I think it's a British thing where it's just like it's a completely different style of performance than than an American performance. Yeah, and you throw her into something like yeah. that, and it's very. But also, she comes from most of her movies have been independent films. So you take someone like that and you put them in a big blockbuster. There's always like a real kind of divide. Yeah. Um. I think she's great. She is the best part of this. Yeah. But I felt the same. It didn't hold up for me on the second viewing. Mm. But I find a lot of these Marvel ones do it, particularly when it's like a solo film. It just doesn't yep. quite get me the second time around. Ant Man and the Wasp was one I loved in the cinema, and when I rewatched it, I was like, "Yeah, no, I can this watch Iron Man every day of the week." And yeah, but see, that's different. It. Iron Man, the Captain America ones, I could watch Thor, like Thor Ragnarok is amazing. Yeah. But then someone like the smaller films, Doctor Strange is not one I can watch that much. No. Black I'm Widow, with- Ant Man the Wasp. First Ant Man though is really good. Yeah. Could watch that over and over yeah, again. I don't that. know. I think there's just some of these sort of smaller, more I guess maybe if you want to call them more intimate kind of ones, just don't they just don't hold up as much on the no, second viewing. No, no, exactly. Still a good film and enjoyable, but it's almost like with this one I don't need to watch over and over again. Yeah, but no, with Black Widow I just found that the character of Black Widow you know, she did everything mm. you'd seen her do before yeah. and, and then watching yeah. it this time I sort of didn't deliberately, I suppose, but mm. I paid more attention to Elena. Mm. Yeah, I mm. think there you go. It's interesting. Mm. I think um, I think it was more of a van- I won't say a vanity project, but it was more like, okay, Scarlett deserves this now. She's been in all these movies yeah. for so long, but yeah. she really pushed for it too. Yeah, uh, rightly so. You would. Everyone yeah. else has had the like the leading role, mm. and then um, you know, ten years. And she that's long. right. She did deserve it. Yeah. I mean, she's put the yards yeah. in and yeah, yeah. You know, put the time in and all that sort of shit. So she deserved to get a film of her own, mm. and on first watching, we loved it. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people the the issue that I hear from a lot of people is that the movie is almost too late, particularly when you've mm. got it set like three movies back. It's just a little. It's like yeah, it's suppose. a little bit too late for some people. I mean, yeah. we're so used to these kind of coming out of order and being released kind of all over the place now that I feel like maybe that's something. It's like we've already seen her arc, we've seen her die, we've seen her, mm. you know, have that closing, and then you go back and you do. It's almost like I don't know, who knows? Yeah, maybe it would be interesting to rewatch them all again and in order, in order. and then see kind of how it there you go, how it plays three out. Three weeks it was fucking twenty three no, movies like now. Day and night, three weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like 23, 24 movies. You've got the series now as well, which yeah. like, it's crazy. Madness. Um, hey, but I actually didn't mention at the top, we've come out of lockdown as of today, Woo-hoo! Friday, which is beautiful. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yes, good Thank on you, so Victorian. Much. Thank well you. Done. Cut it out. But just those who haven't got the second one, keep going, keep getting them. Exactly right. So we can lock up, exactly prop- right. unlock, sorry. So, Unlock it yeah. properly. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, so they, well, they, why I brought this up is because in two weeks' time, cinemas are going to reopen, which means we can finally see Shang Chi, oh, and um, it'll be it won't be playing. And anymore. then no, it is because there's actually screens tonight because the drive-ins are open, so they're, oh, allowed, okay. they're allowed to open outdoor Cinemas, entertainment yeah. venues. Right. So Shang Chi's playing at the drive-in, but I'm not. I've waited this long. I'm not going to the fucking drive-in no. to see Shang Chi. <laughs> um, and then, so that'll open. I'm sure that'll open. I spoke to a friend Brendan, who's in Sydney or he's in Canberra now, but uh, he says Black Widow is still playing in cinemas over there. Oh, really? So they're going to just got to keep these things in the fucking cinemas. You can make as much money as they can. Well, they're going to try and get some money back out. Yeah. Of so we should be able to see Shang Chi from about the fifth when we're actually. Well, I think they're actually talking about next Friday. Oh, really? Yeah, they reckon they, they might open a little earlier. Oh, well, that'd be nice. So they're talking about opening cinemas next Friday, which is what, the 30th, isn't it? Um, yeah, 29th. 30, 29th. Yeah. So, yeah, so they're talking about opening opening next Friday. But whether that happens or not, I mean, well, we'll see. We'll see. So, and then on the 11th, I think it's the 11th, we get The Eternals, which we'll talk about soon. Yep. So we have a couple of Marvel movies to see in the cinemas. On the 5th, actually, we're going to see James Bond, No Time to Die. Which I'm sure you're really looking forward to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, a bit like I'm working that day. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll take someone else. Um, but other than that, we watched, um, other than Black Widow, we watched uh, Jungle Cruise for the third time. <laughs> third time watching Jungle Cruise. How did this hold up for you on third watch? I didn't mind it. Yeah. How, how up better than Black Widow? Black yeah. Widow did for me. I was surprised. I was like, whoa. 
how much is this? That's a worry because I love the Pirates movies. I could watch them over and over and over again. Yeah. And I, I've watched, maybe I haven't watched them in the last couple of years, but for a while there I was watching them at least once a year. Yeah. And they never get old. Yep. They are just, I love them. And I'm thinking, I just hope Jungle Cruise is that kind of movie where I could just watch it like maybe once a year and just love it. Mm. And I feel like it might just be because I still love it. Three watches in. What did your review call it? A pulpy romp. Pulpy romp, yeah. And that's exactly what it is. My pal, The Rock, (laughs) (laughs) retweeted it, quote tweeted it. And he's like, oh, I love that man. Yeah. Use it in marketing then. They, <laughs> they did actually use some quotes of mine in marketing for no. Jungle Cruise, but not that one. Oh, bugger. That's probably a bit avant-garde for them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, maybe. They've been using my quotes in Free Guy, hashtag Free Guy, yeah. <laughs> advertising <laughs> as well. Uh, a digital spot. So you might actually, I, I don't think they're running them on TV, but you might get one randomly pop up on Instagram or like before a YouTube video or something, you'll see my little quote there uh, for free guy, yeah. But, yeah, Jungle Cruise, I thought it was so – I think it's just as fun three times in. Yeah, it's good fun. Yeah, it is I love good it. fun. And there, and there were still things in it that I missed the first couple of watchings yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's little, 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 yeah. I suppose, Easter eggs, I suppose, yeah, yeah. that you, that you yeah. discover the further you mm. – you know, the more you watch it, I suppose. I think – well, the first time we watched it was like 11 o'clock at night, remember, because the screener came through. Yeah, that's right. Um, and the embargo was like the next day or something, so we're like, fuck. Oh, no, the kid, no, 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 because they'd sent it to me three days before and didn't tell me. That's right. And then it was about to expire, so we had to watch it like 11 o'clock. Mm. And then the next week we saw it in the cinema with Disney. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, and then now I've bought the disc and um, watching that, which yeah. is – that's fucking good. And you actually did buy that one. Didn't you? I did buy that one. I bought that and Black Widow. Yep. Um, but I am also, Disney will also send me a copy of Jungle Cruise in a little slip cover from overseas. Oh, right, okay. So I'll get that. But I thought, fuck, I want the steel book. So I bought the steel book. Mm. Paid fucking just not cheap. for it. They're like $45 now, these steel books. Ooh, what the hell? hell? That's why I stopped buying steel books. But JB did a 20% off sale. I was like, fuck it, I'm going to buy them both. I want to watch them again. I feel starved for good content at the moment, even though they're both on Disney Plus for free, but I want the steel box. So. Yeah. There you go. As you know, they're not going to be on there forever. No, I know exactly. Exactly right. But you've got them forever now. I've got them forever. Um, we also watch, we watch one new, well, not new film. It's probably like 10 years old or something at this point, but it was new to us when we hadn't watched. Sunday nights, we tend to put on something that's a little easier to watch. Might be like a romance or something. Usually is. Uh, we watched one called a what? A romance, a romance. film. Yeah, far literal. Love you saying that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, I still have these just weird little things where I just they sound British now. Yeah, I no. spent two years in Britain and nearly three years. And you and and you don't say the letter Z. It's always Z. Yeah, but that's because because um, Sesame Street done me over yep. with that as a kid. So I always said Z yeah. on Sesame Street. So I learned the alphabet song with Z. Yeah. And so now I say Z. I can't say Z. I can't do it. I had to do that DC fandom thing <laughs> yeah. last week. And I had to say, what was it? Uh, d- uh, d- had to DC fandom or DC after party A and Z. I just couldn't do it. Yeah. Couldn't do it. It took ages for you took to get that right. ages for me to get it right. Because uh, it's always Z. It's the American. But after spending two years in England, just certain things, I think it's, I don't know. So, some some words I just can't say. But the, but the funny, but the funny thing is that mm. when you were a kid, you yeah. actually had a British accent. Yeah, yeah. And the reason for that was because mm. the woman in the crash that you that we had you in, she was English, and you spent most of your day with her, so you yeah. had a British accent. Yeah. So it's probably come back. It's unsurfaced. No, I've bashed, I've bashed it earlier. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's unsurfaced itself now. It's yeah, come to the surface yeah. again. Fucking hell. I can't get rid of it. I've been home for two years. Yeah. And certain words I just say, I'm like, fucking hell. Well, you've had no so interaction weird. with anybody. That's why. That's true, yeah. You know, and so everything weird. we watch is either British or American. Yeah, true. Not a lot of Australian content, really. Crazy. So anyway, we watched yeah. um, we watched another romance film this Sunday, <laughs> um, which is uh, Far From the Madding Crowd. This is based on the novel by Tom Hardy. Has um, uh, one of my favourites, Carrie Mulligan. Uh, who else is in it? I can't remember. Had a few people in there. Um, Michael Sheen. Oh, yeah, Michael Sheen. Matthias. Sean Ertz, something, it, yeah. yeah. A few others. Because this was directed by Thomas Vinterberg, who did... Um, Juno Temple. 
yeah, Juno Temple was in it very briefly. Uh, but yeah, it was directed by uh, Thomas Vinterberg, who did Another Round, which was that film with Mads Mikkelsen where they all got drunk. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was a great film. Yeah. Love that. Um, and he also did that fucking submarine one that I hated, which had that Matthias Schoenertz guy in it. Kur- I think it was a Kursk. Oh, yeah, one you, of ha- them. you hated that. It was either that or the I other one, it. that <laughs> other fucking submarine <laughs> shit. Yeah. Have a look which one. Yeah, Kursk. Kursk, yeah. yeah. And so that was directed by Thomas Vinterberg as well yep. and had that Ma- Matthias Schoenert, so it, I don't, can't pronounce his name. Um, and then what did you think of Far From the Madding Crowd? <sighs> dull. <laughs> dull? I found it dull. Yeah. But it was all right. I mean, it was watchable and mm. it was an easy thing to watch on a Sunday night. And, but I wouldn't go back and watch it again. No. I liked it. I think I... I tend to enjoy like literary adaptations. Yeah. I find a lot of them really boring though. This one didn't bore me so much. I think there's just always something going on. I get I get it though. It is a little bit dull. Um and it's long. It's over just over 2 hours I think from memory. Um yeah. but I really liked it. I think maybe I just really like Carrie Mulligan. So I'll watch anything she's oh, in. She, yeah, and she was she was fantastic. She and was good. enjoy everything she's yeah. in. Yeah, she was um, really good. And the score is incredible as well. The music's gorgeous. And again, that's, um, you know, when I'm working away, I have my film scores playlist yep. on on Spotify. Mm-hmm. Occasionally tracks from this will come up. And I think that's partly, again, why I went to it. I was like, oh, yeah, I want to check this movie out now. One particular track that always comes up, I'm like, oh, I like this. Um, but it was good. It was in, it was enjoyable. But, it's like, again, it's a literary adaptation, so you've got to be yeah. um, acquired taste or you've got to be in the mood for it. Yeah. I think. No, I didn't, I didn't mind it. I didn't, I didn't hate it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Not, it was watchable and yeah. enjoyed it, but it just found it a bit dull. slow and yeah. dull. And I liked it. I en- I enjoyed it. I thought, oh, yeah, it's one we put off for ages because I thought it's going to be boring. But mm. I liked it. I, li- I liked it far more than uh, than I did than I did expect. And Kerry Malkin's great. She's amazing. just love her. Yeah, she's so love good. everything. Just about everything she touches. Mm-hmm. I think terrific. Michael Sheen's a funny one though. Yeah, he does some. He's weird hit. Stuff. He's hit or miss. Yeah, I reckon some yeah. stuff he does. There's not been a lot that's mm. been really good, but most stuff's just mediocre. Just like he's a great actor, though. But yeah, he's yeah, just fantastic. Like, yeah, yeah. You're gonna say what's his name, just, Mr. Wet Blanket? Yeah, <laughs> Colin Firth. It's a bit like him. <laughs> yeah, oh, Colin yeah. Firth's worse. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I love Colin Firth. I reckon he's fantastic. Movies are just but so his movies are just dull, so fucking boring and yeah. slow and yeah. boring, and nothing happens. Yeah. And Michael Sheen for me is a little yeah. bit that way. I think it's that again. British thing, yeah. But I think it's because, conservative, yeah, because they're both very. Um, it's that, um, and I think Kenneth Branagh is the yeah. same in that they're, they're the training, the the kind of like Shakespearean, yeah. the classical training yeah. they've had, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was that was it for the way for the way of uh, movies this week. Television wise, not a lot. We can skim through this. Uh, Morning Wars again, still going strong. Oh, I love it. Five yeah, episodes still, in, still very good, really great, getting stronger. It is too. I'm really excited to see where this. And you can see goes. you can see how the characters, how the actors have actually, you know, become a real ensemble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how they've how they've how they work together it's always properly that, now. It's always that second season that kind of solidifies yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, which is good. Um, Only murders in the building finished this week. That's so with sad. An absolute ripper of a finale. Oh, yeah. Oh. Set up the next season. Yeah, I don't want to spoil real it. Real well. Yeah. Well, we've known for a while that there's a second season coming. Yeah. I kind of wish they hadn't revealed that though when they did because I feel like it would have been a nice little like twist yeah. because they market it as a limited series. Mm. It was supposed to be like a limited thing. Um, but then the end is like fucking wide open for the next one. I'm like, what the fuck's going to happen next? But yeah, I wish they hadn't announced like two months ago that, yeah, we're doing a second season. Mm-hmm. Just let just let it ride out. Yeah. Tell us after the finale. Yeah. Like, what a ripper of a... Great and, finale. And it's going to take us in new directions too, I think, new season, which is good. Because that's the problem. We were like, how the hell do you... How do you follow this up? What is it going to become like a more procedural show where each season focuses on a different murder that's happened mm-hmm. in the building... Mm-hmm. It goes in like a completely different direction. Again, not spoiling anything, but um, such a great show. I love it. Yeah, love it, love yeah. it, love it, love it. As I say every week, it was it's a real surprise packet for me. Yeah, it's been a real surprise. Yeah. So we've had two really great comedy shows mm. that have just spawned recently, and can't uh, be Ted though. Ted, Ted Lasso. I was going to say great. it's our first week without Ted Lasso. Yeah, sad, isn't which it? Which was a bit sad actually. No Ted. No Monday Ted. 
Bring back the 23 season episode. I know. Three <laughs> episode seasons, I reckon. I know. <laughs> Actually, you know how I always say there's always, I always hear from at least one person every week that's just got into Ted Lasso? Yeah. Our pal, Lockie Ferguson, messaged me this Last night, actually, he said, Ted Lasso is fucking great. <laughs> I was like, yes. He's like, I've just got Apple TV Plus. He said um, he like, smashed out the first three episodes. It's like, I'm in love already. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that would be his sort of yeah. his sort of thing. He's I like, tell me what else I can watch on <laughs> Apple TV. It's like everything. It's all so good, except for that fucking sci-fi thing. Lucky number two. Lucky number two. I, I call him number two. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so there's another... Um, Ted convert. Yeah, yeah fantastic. Got. Almost, I'm telling you, it's every week I hear from another person who's like, I've just discovered Ted Lasso. It's the best fucking thing I've ever watched. Uh, it is the best. Uh, if you haven't watched it, God damn it, fucking watch Ted watch Lasso. It. Everyone loves it. I have not heard one person say they don't like well, this Well, I told program. you it was last week, the week before. Yeah, when you were at work. The, the owner of the business. Yeah. I was sort of talking to him and he started yeah. hanging on about Bad. it. Madness. I've never... And he, he, he was thinking he was the only mother to say, I said, oh, yeah, my no. God, he's obviously... <laughs> yeah. So weird. It's like, I don't know if I've ever seen anything that is so universally loved. Yeah. Like, maybe since The Office, something like that. Even then, The Office is like more of a... I think Office is something that picked up traction later. Yeah. Because you never really heard, well, particularly here anyway, they stopped playing it on television. The only way we were watching it was on the DVDs. I had yep. to keep importing the DVDs. Yep, that's right. Um, because they stopped playing it here after like one or two seasons. Mm. And we couldn't get into the British version. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't watch the British version. Yeah. And it wasn't. It was only until we watched the, most of the American, American stuff that we mm. thought, oh, let's have a look at it again. And then we understood more about yeah, yeah, exactly. David Brent and yeah. to get into that. Yeah. And even Friends. Yeah. Like Friends is one that not everybody likes. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. There's a huge divide with Friends. Yeah. It's either I you find that there's either people who love Friends or love Seinfeld. Oh, yeah, didn't think about it's that. It's like these two like warring things. People are always like Friends is better than Seinfeld. Seinfeld is better than Friends. You fucking hate Seinfeld. Don't like. Can't, I've never watched a full episode. I can't watch it. I've watched one. Friends, I have, but I don't love it. Yeah. So yeah. I'm sort of in between there. Yeah, where you weird. Don't like that. Yeah. And I watch yeah. that, but I, I'm not a big fan of it. Yeah, interesting. Probably because probably you watch it every fucking day for years. Yes, and watched it. Great it's a great show. But there's nothing to, nothing to dislike about Ted. No. I have, not, I have not heard one person say they don't like it. I'm sure there are people out there that don't like it, but I have not. I have, I've not heard I have one. not seen one person say, I fucking yeah. hate this show. Or, no, yeah, agree. No, great show. So anyway, here we are still talking about it, and it's been over for a week. Um, we watched um, we watched a couple of ads of sex, a uh, couple of eps of sex education this week. We've got two mm-hmm. left to the season. Mm-hmm. Such a good show, yeah, really, really good show. Each episode's gotten better and better too. Yeah, it does too, and it's kind of like the more they delve into what's going on. Mm. Yeah, it's great. So two more. We'll probably finish that this week. And that'll be sad when that goes too. Yeah, I know. I'm going to wait another fucking... That's why I hate watching shows like a season at a time. You know, <laughs> yeah. there's a point there where we're like, fuck it, just wait till the whole thing's done and then watch it all. Um, but no, it's so hard now to do that though because there's so much content you have to yeah, keep Yeah, exactly up. right. Um, so it is, it's weird. It's back to that, that kind of um, old school way of watching shit. But I like it though, it's good. Mm. There's always something to watch too. And then you're like, oh fuck, there's another season. Well, well, yesterday I was like, shit, third season of Dickinson starting yeah. in two weeks. Yeah. And then, um, uh, what's it called? Um, Yellowstone? Yeah, Yellowstone's that back. In two or three weeks' time. There's another program too that's back. Um, I can't wait for Yellowstone. I can't, I can't remember what it was, but there's another show that comes back in a couple of weeks' time, which is going to be awesome. Uh, we've got You. Has just gone on Netflix. I have to wait for Alicia to watch that uh, because we watched the first two seasons. Oh, that's the other package. Another parcel. <laughs> I'll be back. Yeah. All right, he's back. What's this? Oh, this must be the other Oz Post one. So we've got there's nothing in that, almost. Probably one DVD or something. Oh, I know exactly what that is, actually. There we yep. go. We've got one more package. That's the other Oz Post one. We've got something else coming from Amazon today as well. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> so you might be prepared to jump up again. <laughs> I can't keep running to the front door. <laughs> I want to use run it up on the treadmill. How funny! Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I can't remember what I was saying. Oh, I'm sure there's another program as well that we're watching that returns next week or in a couple of weeks. I can't remember. I'll look into it and we'll figure it out. Otherwise, we watched an older show this week. Not old, like two years old. 
This one I've kind of just been putting off for a while because I keep forgetting it's there. Um, but it leaves Netflix in like a week. So I was like, fuck, I have to watch this now yep. or it's going to go. It's probably just going to move to Amazon or something. <laughs> but uh, but it's leaving Netflix. So I'm called A Very English Scandal uh, and it stars Hugh Grant and Ben Whishaw. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a true story about, um, what was his name, Jeremy? Um, Lord, Lord, um, um, can't remember. It's a, it's left me already. Yeah. Uh, but it's a true story about this British politician, uh, British MP, who gets in an affair with um, uh, with a younger man, and this is back when um, uh, homosexuality was sort of well, was illegal. It was illegal at the yeah. time in Britain. Jeremy Thorpe. Jeremy Thorpe. Jeremy. Thorpe. So yeah, Jeremy Thorpe. And he has this affair with with the guy, the younger guy, played by Ben Whishaw, which Norman, is Norman Scott. Norman Scott, and Norman Scott decides, well, Jeremy's made his life a living hell, and many years later, Norman's like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just gonna expose this guy." And of course, this is like a career ender at the time. We're talking about sixties, seventies Britain, seventies it was, and yeah, um, so there's like a whole court case and everything, and um, so it's a tr- the true story based on this. And it was really good. It's a limited series, three episodes. So it's like a, a tally movie, really, like yeah, a three-hour yeah, tally yeah. movie. Um, but they were charged with conspiracy, conspiracy to murder. Oh, yeah, because he tried it? to murder, because they he planned to murder the guy. He hired, hired some yeah. people. So that's when, it, that's when he brought it out. But the funny thing about it was that um, Norman Scott didn't yeah. come out to deliberately destroy him in, mm. in the, at the start. Yeah. It was all about him not having his... Um, oh, yeah, his uh, national insurance, insurance card. Insurance card. <laughs> yeah. You know, which is basically a tax file yeah. number. It was all these things over the years that was just like... Yeah. And then it all comes out at the end. And he probably thought that if I go this way, I'll get my, I'll yeah, get, yeah, yeah. I'll get my national, national insurance, insurance card. card. <laughs> I haven't sold it very well, but fucking no. it's, it's very good. It's very similar, I think, to Itonia. Where yeah. it's a story about a bunch of really fucking dumb people. <laughs> Just every single character is really fucking dumb. Uh, yeah, exactly. Jeremy's dumb. Norman's dumb. The fucking guy that he he hires to kill Norman Peter is Bissell. fucking useless. He's got like a ring of like three or four guys who are involved in the the attempted murder, yep. and they're all just so fucking stupid. <laughs> and it's like I Tonya. You've got Tonya was just dumb, and you've got the guy who um, set out to what was the woman's name? They smashed her. They smashed her kneecaps. Uh, but the guy that went and did that, the two guys that did that, were fucking dumb. Yeah. And, you know, they get caught at the end. Yep. And it's just, it's a very similar kind of, just this story of just a bunch of really stupid people doing a bunch of really stupid shit. <laughs> um, but it's really good. It was really enjoyable. Yeah. Oh, I, did, I actually didn't expect it to be a comedy. No, me either. It's like I, a black, like a dark comedy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's down as a, yeah, biography comedy yeah. crime. I wasn't sure really what to expect from it, but I love Hugh Grant. I just want to watch anything yeah, he's in. Yeah. And Ben Whishaw is really good as well. Paddington Bear. Paddington, yeah. Um, and um, I just it looked good. I, I think it was on while I was over there in the UK. Oh, I vaguely right. remember it being on and I wanted to watch it and I just didn't have the time. Um, I finally got around to it. And, yeah, really liked it. Yeah, I did It's too. on Netflix here in Australia until the end of the month. It's probably on Netflix in the UK. They've got all the kind of back catalogue BBC stuff. Right. So it's probably just on there in general. Mm. But Amazon is doing a second season. Amazon's picked it up as like a co-production with the BBC because they're doing a lot of stuff with BBC at the moment. Right. Um, and they're trying to turn it into a like anthology series, a bit like Underbelly or something mm-hmm. like that, where each season's going to focus on like a different uh, British scandal. Right. Uh, so I think the second season's actually going to be called a very British scandal right. instead of a very English scandal right. because it's focused on some Scottish guy. Right. And there's going to be Paul Beckney and Claire Foy, who oh, was, really? yeah, who was Queenie. of course, the Queen from the yeah. first season of The Crown. Yeah. Um, so that'll be interesting to see. I think that's, yeah, that's going to Amazon. Yeah, enjoyed that. It was really good. And Hugh Grant, to see Hugh Grant do like a – um, really kind of dark, darker character. Yeah. Very similar to what he did in um, the other one we watched with him and Nicole Kidman. Can't remember what that was called now. Um, the, yeah. It wasn't The Outsider. It was, um, I can't remember, the HBO one. But that was really good and he kind of played like a dark character in that as well. 
Um, so it's kind of div- it's interesting to see him take on different roles now. And uh, with that, that brings us to. It's the Mad Men update. How many did we do? Three episodes? Yes. So we started, started season four. They've now started a new firm. It's uh, now Sterling Cooper, Draper, Price. Last week we were debating over who Price was, and we thought it was. Um, jo- 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 Joan. Jo- Joni. Joan. Yeah, yeah, Joan. That's so right. she, we thought she must have been the um, uh, the partner, but it's not. It's the English guy. It's the English guy that yeah, they that's brought right. in, it brought yeah. into the brought into the company. Um, so yeah, they've started a new company. They're now in a new building, which is much more modern than the old building building they were in. Um, it very much feels like we're rooted in the nineteen sixties now. Yeah, sixty. We just going into sixty. What well, sixty five? Yeah, but there was always it always felt very fifties, the early seasons. Yeah, yeah. I think particularly because maybe the building they were in, and but now they've moved into like this really modern building. Mm. Feels very sixties. Which would what we would now call mid century modern. Oh yeah, that's what we'd call it. Now. Um, well, yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, it's good. It just keeps getting better and better. Yeah. So good. Yeah, I was, I was hanging to start that fourth season. Yeah. And it started really well. Yeah. Loved it. He's Love it. he's spiralling further and further. Yeah. As far as I understand, he's going to have a real battle with his alco- alcoholism this season. <laughs> I can imagine that. <laughs> yeah. Because he just keeps <laughs> fucking going yeah. down and down and down. So apparently this season's going to get real good, mm. which is surprising because usually it's the fourth season that's a bit shit Yeah, with some shows. So, yeah, um, yeah but that's still very good. Mm. Still enjoying that. Yeah, love it. Still love it. Yep. The English guy, Jared, uh, was it's Jared Harris. That's right. That's the name of the actor? Yeah. Yeah. Lane Price. He's see, he keeps popping up in shit recently. Yeah, we've seen him in a lot of stuff. He was right in um, that one on Apple that we didn't like, the sci-fi one. Um, yep. uh, I can't even remember the name of that now either. Out. <sighs> fucking hell. That's because we're not in the normal room. Yeah, probably. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. That's thrown us off. Yeah. Um, the oh, I can't even remember what it was called, but it was that Apple one. We watched five episodes and it was just foundation. It. Foundation, yeah, couldn't get yeah. into it. Um, yeah, oh, um, Chernobyl. Uh, Chernobyl. I was going to yeah, say we Chernobyl. watched him in that. Uh, but yeah, so there we go. That's uh, any other further words for Mad Men? Not really. Just loving it. <laughs> Mad Men update. All right, so that just brings us to just a couple of really quick partner highlights here, of course. I always got to give a shout-out to my buddies over at Random Space Media, developing really fantastic DVD, Blu-ray box sets, particularly Blu-ray stuff, with uh, the studio's distribution uh, uh, distribution arms, uh, so Disney, Universal Pictures, uh, et cetera, et cetera. They've just put out a Tremors 7 movie collection, which I got my hands on yesterday. So it's all the Tremors movies. Um, I've seen the first one's quite fun. I don't know what the rest are like. I think the second and third one is supposed to be okay, and the rest, I believe, are like straight to DVD films. No, oh, right. Michael Gross is in them all. The the father from Family Ties. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I remember him on one of the morning shows last year because they released the seventh one last year, and he was on it, fucking talking about it. Mm. He's been on it since the beginning. Kevin Space, not Kevin Spacey, fucking Kevin Bacon, Bacon. was in the Always first one. Yeah, Kevin I know. Spacey, <laughs> so anyway, they've just brought out the seven movie collection of Tremors. I'm excited to have a look at some of them. They've also released an, a HP Lovecraft collection, Ooh. which they have done in... Bom, bom, t- t- no, oh, his sure. name oh. is HP Lovecraft. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> not like Linda Lovelace. No, <laughs> HP Lovecraft. It's like a horror science fiction kind of writer, right. author. Um, and they release a bunch of movies based on his works. This is a collaboration with Umbrella. Oh. So weird. So we've got these two boutique labels, independent labels, kind of working together, together for this. And what this is, this is like a reissue of a bunch of their – they've got a line – Umbrella's got a line called Beyond Genres. And this is a reissue of a bunch of the early Beyond Genres um, releases alongside this um, Nick Cage film called Colour Out of Space. Um, um, the, these other films are like Drogon or Dra- Drogan and the uh, Reanimator films, Reanimator, Bride of the Reanimator, something else. Um, so a lot of those were early Beyond Genres editions, which I missed out on because I think they went out of print. Um, and now they're all together in this little mm. box set, which you can get exclusively through Random Space Media. It's not even on the Umbrella website. So oh. go check that one out if you're interested in that. They also sent me a couple of Cartoon Network things. 
um, Craig of the Creek, which is a series I'd never heard of, and there was some other one that I'd never heard of either, like complete series box sets that they've sent over, something called Summer Camp, something Summer Camp, and I think that's all they sent me. Oh, they sent me some new show called Middle Ages with Steve Buscemi and Daniel Radcliffe, oh. Harry Potter. Daniel Harry it. Potter, yeah. You check that out. Yeah, it looks pretty good, but it's the second season, so go oh, by the first. <laughs> um, That's how they get you. <laughs> exactly right. Um, kicks.com.au, I spoke to um, my contact over there, uh, my wonderful contact over at kicks.com.au. She said, hey, I've extended your code. I said, I thought you had because uh, it was still active. She says it's active to the end of the year. Oh, so they've awesome. extended to the end of the year now. So you can head over to kicks.com.au and use Dave15 until the end of the year uh, and you get 15% off store-wide, including pre-orders and sale products. So head over there and check out what they've got. There's a lot of really great uh, 4K um, catalogue titles that are coming out over the next month that you'll be able to get through kicks.com.au in Glorious Bastards is one of them. Um, I can't remember the other ones. (laughs) Oh, The Thing. John Carpenter's The Thing. Um, a lot of like really great stuff that's coming out 4K catalog. So go and check sure. them out. You can get them through there and get your fifteen percent off. And um, they're going to send them over to me. I was like, "Can I please have these things?" <laughs> and she's like, "Already got them ordered for you." I was like, "Thank you. You know me by now." Because <laughs> some, because some of them, most of them, I have to, um, I have to request what I want. Yeah. Whereas yep. Kicks will just. Just, just send them. Just send yeah. me a bundle. Sometimes we're like, can can you send me this? And this time she's like, what are random? Do they just send stuff? Randoms or? just randomly send stuff as well. Yeah. Those are just send stuff. But a couple of the other, a couple of the other ones I actually have to pick what I want. But she's like, yeah, I know you by now. I've got them on order. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> it's funny. All right, so that brings us to shite. Or all right, all right, all right. I almost almost missed my or in there. This is shite. All right. Uh, this is the, 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 I was going to say the video game. It's not a video game. This is the game that we play every single week where we get people to send in some random obscure titles from IMDb that are either going to be... What a big good, no, good picture. No, yeah. no, 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 no. They're either going to be... Shite. Or... All right, all right, all right. <laughs> what a fucking disaster of a show this one is. Take two. <laughs> Take two, yeah. No, okay, so they're either going to be... Shite. Or... All Right, all right, all right. And we have to guess what they are ju- based just on the synopsis alone. No titles, no actors, no year, no nothing. Can't know anything other than the synopsis. You know, people send in something that's really obscure. Might sound really, really shit, but it's good. Or it might sound really, really good, and it's absolute shit. Good chance. Good chance. So uh, the way we judge this is... Anything, we judge it by the IMDb rating, so anything under a 5, so a 0 to 4.9 is a... Shite. Anything 5 and above? No. No? Oh, no, no, 5.9. <laughs> Fuck me. What's happening today? Zero, zero to 4 point, zero, uh, zero to 5.9 is... Uh, shite. And everything um, 6 and above. All right, all right, all right. Fuck me. <laughs> what a fucking disaster this is just just from literally just from changing room and doing things just a oh, little just a little bit differently hilarious. maybe next week we need to sit next to each other <laughs> just how we used to be in the other room because this is just it's done my head in today uh, so anyway uh yeah that's the game you know how it works um our uh, i will remind you from the beginning that we do have the shite all right drinking game as sent in from wacko jacko woods west manager uh, the Shine Alright drinking game is one. If you guess the Shine Alright wrong, you got a drink. If the synopsis is reread, you got a drink. If Devesh's name is read, you got a drink. And if the segment ends, you got to finish your drink. So by the end of it, you fucking you got a drink. You, you finish your drink anyway. <laughs> okay, so our pal Jeff, monkey boy Jeff, my little worker monkey, <laughs> who's always working away on the little score sheet. He sent the score sheet in today. Very he early. He did. Yes. I oh, got his got his ass off up off the couch yeah. and did some work. Yeah, I actually messaged him. I'm like, we were starting to record earlier, mate. We're not doing it in that room anymore. You better fucking get me that fucking score sheet. <laughs> First thing in the morning, you little shit. <laughs> like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> no, I messaged him. I'm like, mate, look, I think I'm going to start recording a bit earlier. Could you, could you please, please send it to me just a little bit earlier please, tomorrow? Sir, uh, can I have please, some more? please. He's like, sure thing, boss. 
Um, okay, so uh, he's written in today. Written in today. Right. Uh, God's sake. He says, get a in the beginning, boss man. Don't know what the hell that means. He says, this is the first pod where they don't see my pretty face. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> All right. Uh, he, here's yet another draft email from your resident off-brand Tarzan. I'm glad this segment is so popular. I like you guys too. Not you guys, just the listeners. I just deal with you too. It's a bit cheeky. What a sacky. Yeah. He says, no, only joking. You guys are all right, I guess. So are we all right or are we... All right, all right, all right. <laughs> That's up for others to decide. Yeah. <laughs> um, he says, I think it's funny how we both live in places that people would love to visit but require a warning. Very true, because he's in uh, Florida. <laughs> oh, okay. Which is always having a little bit of trouble with something or other. Yep. If you go to new, if you go to like the news tab on Google and you type in Florida man, yeah. some of the fucking stories that Weird come stuff. up on there. Let's put like, <laughs> let's do it. That should be a new segment on the show. Florida man. Uh, so if I go to google.com, right, you go to the new, you go to news, you go Florida man. Let's see what the first news story is uh, that comes up. Central Florida man accused of killing neighbor whose cat wandered onto his property. Oh, this was four hours ago. <laughs> Literally, that is the first one that top pops up. So if you go to if you go to the news, yeah, and you type in Florida man, there's always some fucking weird story from Florida. <laughs> yeah, well, don't type in South Australia. No, exactly, <laughs> some exactly. Weird shit happens there. Yeah. We're um, used to anyway. Yeah. So he says anyway. I'm working on my own shine. All right, suggestion list this week, as you asked for it. Thank you very much. See you later. That's the more Australian thing, he says. And catch you. Catch you later's more. Yeah, well, he wrote that in, like, quotation marks too, as if that was, like, a saying. See you later. That's the more Australian thing. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and between us three, I kind of enjoy this. Shh. Um, and so he sent me that, and he forgot to attach the the thing again, uh, the, the run sheet. So then he sent another one. He says, I told you I was daft, lol, 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 and then he attached it. <laughs> okay, so this week, um, it's 36 to 37 in your favour still. Last Woo! week, last week we both got one, so there's been absolutely no change whatsoever. Absolutely no, no change uh, whatsoever on that round. So what we're going to do today is we're doing two Shadow or Rights each. This is another way to kind of get the show down just a little bit because we realise this segment goes for 20 minutes sometimes. <laughs> so we're just going to do – this is how we start. We, when we first started this game, it was like two each. So we're going to do that, and hopefully this is a good way to get, get the show down just, just a little bit. So I think you're guessing first because you're still on a Am deficit I? of one. I've guessed first 13 times. You've guessed first 12 times. Oh, there you go. I'll go first then. Okay. So this one has – oh, actually, I should say we've had new submissions – from Louis Glover, who's mm-hmm. never sent them in before. Uh, he actually writes in. He says, hey, Dave and old mate Rick, hope you're both doing well. I'm a big fan of the pod and have been having a think of some movies to send in for the shite or all right game. Hope you enjoy them. Best regards, Louis Glover. P.S. I'm not related to Danny Glover. It's quite <laughs> a popular surname here in the UK. So he must be related to Donald Glover then. Yeah, oh, that makes sense. Oh, there you yeah, go. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. So Childish Louis, Gambino. Yeah. So he sent in one, um, and we also got one from Wacko Jacko, the Woods West manager, mm-hmm. which you'll read soon. But yep. first up, I will read the one that has been sent in from Lewis. It's called, I won't tell you, uh, I'll, read the, I'll read the synopsis though. A, um, a radio host interprets the possible outbreak of a deadly virus which infects the small Ontario town he is stationed in. Another Canadian film. Yeah, sounds like it. Ontario, that's Canada, is it? Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> it, is. It's a, it is a Canadian film. Um, yeah, better take a drink because I want that again. Okay, go for it. I'll take one too. <sighs> okay, a radio host interprets the possible outbreak of a deadly virus which infects the small Ontario town he is stationed in. It's a bit too close to home, I think. Yeah, at, the, at this point. Yeah, know, I was thinking that as well. <laughs> I'm going to say that's going to be uh, shite. You know, it's going to be shite. I think it'll be shite. You want to lock that one in? Shite. Yeah. It is. No, it's not <laughs> Mad Men. <laughs> bong time. Fucking hell. No, it's not bong time. <laughs> it's not. It's. All right, uh, all right, all right. It's not bong time. It's Mad Men update. And it's finished. <laughs> it's over 10 minutes ago. This is shite all right. 
And that was all right, so it was wrong. Bugger. Okay. So your it's turn. your turn uh, to read one out, and this one comes to us from Sam B. Yes. Facing hanging, a bank robber makes a deal with the corrupt banker to avoid execution in exchange for dirty for a dirty assignment. Go again. Hang on. Facing... Oh, I'm going to take a drink too. <sighs> <sighs> Facing hanging, a bank robber makes a deal with the corrupt banker to avoid execution in exchange for a dirty assignment. It's got, it sounds like some Arnold Schwarzenegger crap, probably. Knowing the stuff that's like porn to me. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he wants a dirty assignment. Well, yeah, well, all right. So, but knowing the ones that Sam sends in, it's usually some sort of like action film from the bloody eighties or some shit. Um, it, uh, but then some of them are rated really well. I don't know. It sounds pretty crap. It's probably going to be all right, but I'm going to say it's shite. You're saying it's shite. I'm going to lock in shite, and it is shite. Ah, yes. It's called Cactus Jack. Cactus Jack. What the hell is this? It's a five point three. <laughs> and you were right. It's got Schwartz in there. There you go. And Kirk Douglas and Margaret Paul Kirk Lind. Douglas. Foster Brooks got a few people in it. What the hell? Let me look. Oh, is this? I have a feeling. Let me look. Cactus Jack. Yeah, this is like an unofficial Looney Tunes. They made uh, this film as if it was a Looney Tunes cartoon. Oh, really? Yeah, so there's a lot of like they use a lot of the old um, uh, Wiley Coyote and Roadrunner gags in there. Oh, uh, okay. So like, you know, the old gag where um, Wiley Coyote would like – Draw like a tunnel on the on the oh, side yeah, of a cliff, yeah, yeah, yeah. and to try and like trick the road runner, but the road runner like goes, goes straight through, through the cliff, yeah. and then Wiley Cody's like, "What the fuck?" And then he goes to go through the cliff and goes smack, smack into the yeah. yeah. So they do those kind of gags, oh, okay. and it's like I don't think it was made by Warner Brothers, but it was inspired by the Road Runner Wiley Cody cartoons. Oh, okay. It's like this weird chase thing. Mm. See, I did know it, and it is shit. It is absolute <laughs> shit. So there, there you go. Um, but it didn't, it didn't peg me from the synopsis there, so it tripped me up. Um, okay, so it's my turn then to read you one, and this one comes into us from our pal, Devesh. Take oh, a sip. Um, okay, so I'm going to read this one to you. This is one from Devesh. But, oh, fuck, I've got to do it again. Oh, I, I wound up with some al- ice in my mouth. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> 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 got to go back in there. Okay. So this one is from our pal who sent in so many fucking titles, I thought we'd better get through one this week. Okay, this one. Inspired by a real story. A determined high school senior strives to be a wrestler one last time despite having cerebral palsy and goes to extreme lengths, crushing obstacles and inspiring others along his journey to prove his abilities. Sounds like my sort of film. Yeah. Bit of a dramatic sort of thing. I'll say it's all right. You'll say it's all right? I'll say it's all right. Straight off the bat. Okay. This one is a... Shite. Oh. Yeah. Only just, though. Only just. Bugger. 5.8. Sounds all right. It's called yeah. Triumph. Oh. Yeah. It's, uh, oh, it's, this, it's a new film, 2021. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Triumph. Um, it's got um, uh, Terrence Howard in there. Oh, original yeah, yeah. original yep. Rhodes. Yep. Rhodey from Marvel, who dipped out because he wanted as much money as Robert Downey Jr. That's right. And they said, get fucked. <laughs> get out of here. What are you doing? Uh, it's also got a bunch of people I've never seen in my life. I wonder if he regrets that. Probably. Mm. Have to be. That would be like one of those things. It's like that's the biggest mistake I've ever made in my life. Yep. Did I actually tell you what the, the first Shide or Right was? Um, maybe not. No, we just moved on. Yeah. See what's going on today. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? The easiest thing would be I could just like make it look like we're really good and like cut it in and oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. can't be no, fired. No, no, no. This okay. one's called Pont. This is the first one that I read to you yep. that was the all right one. Yep. It's called Pontypool. Oh yeah, Pontypool, the radio host. What into, was the rating on? Um, six point six. Ah, and it's got pff, no one in there that we would know. It's a Canadian thing, so maybe they're well-known Canadian actors: Stephen McHattie, Lisa Howell, Georgina Riley, Grant Alienek, Rick Roberts, Daniel Fathers, 
etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm. All right, so one more from you. Can't believe I didn't read that out earlier. Ah, oh, well, what the hell's going on? Um, now you've got one more, and this one is this one's the one that's been sent in by by Kojaka, the world's worst manager. Right, an evil an evil high fashion designer plots to steal puppies in order to make an extravagant fur coat, but instead creates an extravagant mess. It has to be 101 Dalmatians or right. Cruella. Why has he sent that in? <laughs> that's what that's what it said. It's going to be too easy. You'll get a straight off the bat. What's he, what's he sent that in for? I don't know. That is the stupidest thing. <laughs> I, I just cut out the word Del, Dalmatian in yeah. that, and I thought, oh, maybe if I cut that word out, he may not what's get it. What's he doing? I don't know. You'll get it anyway. I even said to him, who do you want to, to read this one? And he's like, Rick. <laughs> what's he, what's he doing? What's he doing? wanted to see if he knew your films. If he Probably. Knew what what idiot. You can give me another one if you want. I'll give that, you another one because it was far, really fucking easy. That was far too easy. So this one that you're about to read has come in to us from... Um, who was it? Was it Alan Driver? It was Alan Driver. Okay. Um, a mining engineer invest, investigates the death of his fellow co-workers and discovers prehistoric nymphs emerging from the mines. As he heads deeper into the mines, he makes a more horrifying discovery in the form of prehistoric prehistoric flying creature. Oh, what the hell is this? Sounds like it could be like, almost sounds like one of those like Ray Harryhausen films, like the stop motion creatures and shit from like the 60s. But I don't know. I really don't know. I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to say shite. I have to say shite because a lot of those are actually really good, but they got shit ratings. Um, But then, I don't know. It might not be one of them. It could be some other thing. Okay, it is a... All right, all right, all right. Yes, it's called Roden, R-O-D-A-N. Ah, yeah. Oh. 6.3. This is part of the uh, Godzilla films. Is it? Yeah, he's one of the major Godzilla villains. I suppose it's Japanese. Got a 6.3. Mm. Goes for an hour twenty two. Yeah, it's one, Roden. Of the, it's one of the Godzilla characters oh, that he's right, always okay. fighting. I'm sure Roden was in one of the new newer films, maybe. Right. Yeah. Well, well, there you go. There you go. I feel like we tried to cut corners this week and do less, but somehow I think this has gone as long as normal because of all the fuck outs. Uh, <laughs> but regardless, that was this week. <laughs> or, all right, all right, all right. Bring. Beautiful. All right, so that now brings us to... (laughs) Trailer Trash, it's back! It's back, everyone! Trailer Trash is back! The world's worst manager told us to get rid of it, and then people said, bring it back. He's an idiot. Yep. So it's back. Yep. Not going to listen to the world's worst manager. No. Um, I think we'll just do it every now and then when don't, there's a decent trailer. Don't normally listen to him anyway. But, you know. No, exactly right. So I want to have a look. Well, we have to look at this one. This one was released last week at the DC Fandom for the new Batman film called The Batman. Oh, yes. This one stars Robert Pattinson, um, and it is coming out next year, early next year. I'm very excited. Let's take a look. Fear is a tool. But when that light hits the sky, it's not just a call. It's a warning. I've been trying to reach you. Find the gun! This is a powder king, and Rither's to match. I can take care of myself. If this continues, it won't be long before you've nothing left. I don't care what happens to me. It's only going to get worse for you. I'm vengeance. The Batman. Mm. Oh, what he thought. That doesn't look bad at all. Yeah, man. Forward to, when's that next year? That is out uh, next year on, um, I'll tell you, March next year. March 4th in the UK and the USA and March 3rd over here. Awesome. Uh, this one's been uh, directed, I believe written as well, by Matt Reeves, who did the last two um, uh, Planet of the Apes films. Dawn of the Planet yep. or Rise and War of the Planet of the Apes, mm-hmm. whatever the I can't remember. 
I always feel like that they order, they named them in the wrong order. I think the first one's called Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Second one's called Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I, th- I would have thought the first one should have been called Dawn and then Rise and then War. It dawns, then it yeah. rises, and but they did it. So anyway, mm. so he did oh, he yeah. did he did Dawn and and War for the Planet of the Apes. Um, it stars Robert Pattinson as the Batman. Colin Farrell is the Penguin. In an incredible, um, incredible piece of prosthetic work, would never recognise you. Him. Would never recognise him no. in it, no. right there as the penguin. Like how fucking insane is that? It's incredible. That's, isn't it? Yeah, Colin Farrell. Um, you've it's got quite... um, Zoe Kravitz is in there as Selena Kyle, oh, awesome. like um, Catwoman. Yep. Um, you've got, I think, I believe it's Paul Dano is playing. Edward Nigma mm. is the Riddler. Uh, so you've got um, a whole bunch of um, big actors in this. I'm just double checking that it, it was Paul Dano. I think it, yeah, it's Paul Dano. It's also got Andy Serkis as playing Alfred. Peter Skarsgård as playing uh, the District Attorney Gil Colson. Jeffrey Wright as James Gordon. Fucking huge cast, and they're throwing all the uh, John Turturro. John Turturro, my he's God. playing uh, uh, Carmine Falcone, who's the um, or Falcone, yep, yep. who is the mafia boss of Gotham, and uh, it's just massive. It's a stacked cast, stacked actor, stacked cast, stacked characters. This looks fucking cool. It does look good. Yeah. Hopefully, DC have got one right. Well, yeah. Well, this is this is another one where they've gone. This is not part of that DC right. EU yep. m- fucking uh, you know universe thing. The fuck? Yeah. <laughs> so this is just like how they did the uh, Joaquin Phoenix Joker film. This is its own standalone thing. Mm. So this isn't connected to Joker either, but it's its own kind of little pocket universe. Yeah. Sort of like what Christopher Nolan did, I suppose, where he just had his own self-contained. Batman. And Pattinson looks good as Batman too. Yeah. Too. Yeah. He looks, looks, he looks really good. I was a bit, bit mm. miffed as to why they yeah. sort of selected him, but I can see. I can see it might work. Well, we've watched him in a few things recently where he was really quite good. Yeah. Um, he was, of course, in uh, Tenet. Yep. Um, and yep. he was in that Lost, I think it was in Lost City of Z, Z, what it was called. I think he was in that one. Mm. And he was quite good in that too. Yeah, it looks good. And what I'm really excited about, I'm so excited about so much of this, but the music is uh, being done by my favourite, um, I was going to say my favourite working composer, but you've still got John John Williams is still composing and Hans Zimmer. Mm. But the music is being done by uh, Michael Giacchino, whose music I love. I just love his scores. So he's doing the music. And it's still, it sounds very Batman though, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. It's it dark very, and... Yeah. Very bright, yeah. Bra- uh, bra- lots of brass instruments and mm, it just mm. sounds... Uh, so they've really stripped back to like that whole kind of noir, kind of dark kind of feel. Yep. Um, my only issue is it does feel very similar to the Christopher Nolan films. Yeah. In yeah, a way. It does a little bit. Um, it's obviously very distinct. It's obviously oh, found a way to... <laughs> Well, no, exactly right. The Nolan films are fantastic, but I also feel it doesn't look entirely original. I feel it is built kind of in that mould, but I obviously I'm very excited to see this and I hope, like they're talking about how they're doing so much different stuff with it. Story-wise, it's going to be very different to anything they've ever done with Batman before. Um, But even, I mean, if you look at it, the cinematography is very different, like the big colours and the explosions and... I think it'll stand on its own, but from the outset now, I feel I look at it and I do think of the Nolan stuff. It doesn't, there's nothing too subtle about it, is there? No, uh, but I'm keen. Although I think like Colin Colin Farrell as the Penguin is fucking aw- awesome, but I think the most inspired piece of casting here is Zoe Kravitz as Selena Kyle. She mm. just it just feels like that character. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, see, particularly you if you see, see that, that shot of her, she's standing on there just really tall and slender mm. and she's got that figure for it. Um, it just looks – I'm, I'm very excited about it's this. has got a very chiseled sort of face as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, how do you feel about Paul Dano being in it? But no, he's okay. He does a bit some weird stuff sometimes though, but he's okay. Mm. And we don't really get to see much of him in here, but he is playing the Riddler. And I think – actually, I think he's a very good choice – for the Riddler. I could, I could see him. I can see Definitely. him in that role. And he won't, I don't think he'll be doing it as hammy as Jim Carrey oh, did. No, no way. No, no, <laughs> It'll no. be like a darker kind of more, yeah. a real twisted kind of version. Mm. So I'm really keen to see what they do with this. Because you could play that really sort of twisted, yeah. Yeah. demonic sort of character. 
Yet yeah, to be so seen whether it'll be good or not, but it looks it looks off very that, good. off that trailer. I'm looking forward to it. I'm very very keen to take a look at that one. Oh, so only a few months away. Only a few months. Yeah, mate. This is one that they keep pushing. We should have had this like two or three times by now. Yeah, but uh, there you go. So yeah, they released that one at the DC Fandom, and I'm very excited. Mm. Can't wait to check that one out. <gasps> what the hell is that? What the hell is that? Oh, oh, ooh. I know what it is. What's that? That was the stink for the next segment. You're yeah, thinking. the news. <laughs> it's the news segment. We've got a couple of bits of news that we're going to try and breeze through today because we are, we're doing okay for time, but I feel like we're almost going to be pushing two hours. Um, so the big news in this week is Disney has pushed a whole bunch of their release dates back again. What's well, new? Yeah, this is mostly affecting the Marvel movies. Um, all the trains reported on this, but I'm going to kind of read. Deadline was the... The, the best the best article that kind of laid out exactly how it's happening. So I'll read straight from Deadline, mm-hmm. a sort of truncated version of it. Uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness is going to kick off summer 2022 on May 6th instead of March 25. So in most cases, these movies are only getting pushed by a couple of months. A couple of months, yeah. Month and um, half. Yep. So at that, because of that move, that will push Taika Waititi's Thor Love and Thunder from the summer kickoff date to July 8th. Uh, that then moves Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, off its July date to November 11, 2022. Black Panther 2 then knocks the Marvels out of 2022 from that November slot into February 2023. So that'll become the first Marvel movie 23 now. Uh, this, the move of the Marvels, will then push Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania from that February date to July 28, 2023. Um, and then along with the Marvel delays, Disney has moved the fifth Indiana Jones installment back nearly a year. Uh, it's going to June 30, 2023 instead of July 29, 2022. Um, they've also removed four untitled Marvel movies from the schedule. From uh, 2023. Doesn't mean the movies aren't happening. It just yeah. means they've moved them off the schedule. As far as I remember, the schedules that Disney have been sending me only go up to 2023. So they don't okay. include the rest of that. So that's probably why it's just been just knocked off. Um, and one untitled Marvel movie has moved from November 10 to November 3, 2023. Mm-hmm. Go figure. Mm. People are getting a bit worried. Like, what the hell's going on? Are they going to move these all to Disney Plus? Uh, is it because of the pandemic? We've seen really good box office takings over the last few weeks, in particular, as the world sort of starts to go back to normal. So, what the hell is going on? Um, Disney hasn't quite announced it, but the um, the trades are kind of hinting at kind of what is going on with these um, with these with these moves. Uh, the Hollywood Reporter says studio insiders say that the Marvel shifts are primarily due to various production delays as well as finding the best dates for movies as the film industry emerges from the pandemic. Deadline says no need to be alarmed. This has nothing to do with the change in distribution strategy. Some titles are contending with finishing scenario- scenarios while others are in production. This is how Disney is solving it. And when you come to think of it, most of the delays were already reserved for the studio for Marvel Fair. They're just moving titles from one slot to the next. Variety says the major release date shuffle comes after Marvel's Sh- uh, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings cemented its place as a pandemic-era box office hit. The scheduling overhaul is related to production and not box office returns, according to sources at Disney. Uh, For example, the next Black Panther entry is still filming in Atlanta, uh, and since Marvel has become an interconnected and meticulously planned universe, uh, any production delay causes a domino effect for the rest of the franchise. As for Indiana Jones, they're saying uh, Harrison Ford suffered that shoulder injury like a month or so ago. They've been filming without him, but there's only so much they can film without him. And once they get him back in there, they'll start that production up again. So essentially, the COVID thing has wreaked havoc on these films and by the sounds of it some of them might be having production delays and it's like let's just push them all back a couple of months and give these movies some time to breathe for example Black Panther 2 we said this a while ago after uh, the passing of Chadwick Boseman they had like 12 months to re they had like six months to reshape the script yep 
to write him yep. out of it, to reshape the script, and then another six months to film it and get it released. And I said then, there is no fucking way they are releasing that movie. There's no way they're reshaping and filming and releasing a movie in 12 months. Because no. I was just about to start filming that movie when he passed away. So naturally, that's been pushed a little bit. Whatever other delays these other movies are facing, I don't know, but they're all getting knocked down a little bit. There's also been a big thing in Hollywood at the moment. We haven't touched on it on the podcast, but there's been... Um, uh, workers' unions being threatening to strike because they're being worked too hard and too much. Uh, Bob Odenkirk had a heart attack on the set of Better Call Saul a while ago, right, which he put down to being worked Stress. far too hard. Uh, so all these crews, are now, and even then he spoke about it's hard on the crews, like what this work these crews are doing. He turns up to set, he acts, and then he pisses off home, mm. whereas these crews are there for hours before and hours after as well. So what's the, so anyway, they've been threatening to strike and they've now cut a new deal with the unions and whatever and the new deal says that they can't be worked as hard as much. I feel like this is probably going to cause some scheduling issues as well with these movies. So oh, I, think, I don't know doubt about it. So I think there's all these kind of factors that are maybe sort of at play here. Mm. Again, I don't know anything, but we're going by what we can see from the trades and what we know about these about the way Hollywood's going to be working now going forward, I feel like that's probably the best. That's like the most likely scenario ever yeah, that's happening. Yeah, more than likely. Um, so, yeah, so we're going to have to wait a couple of extra months for these movies. I mean, what's what's the difference? Yeah, we've, you know, we've been missing films for the last two exactly years. Right. What's another We should months? have had half of these movies already. Yeah, exactly. So uh, that's another couple of months on that. Fucking whatever. Talking about Marvel also, massive leaks coming out of the Eternals uh, um, premiere screening mm. in um, in LA. Um, we're not gonna we're not gonna spoil it. Well, I sent I sent you a text you the other text day me. about something. Yes, didn't I? this the, is what I'm talking about. Yeah, but I didn't know whether you did. Yeah, seen I would, seen that information. I would, I would have, I would have seen. Gone, it. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I would have seen it because it's everywhere. Yeah. Um, three Variety reporters, three writers from Variety, spoiled this. <sighs> Directly out of the screen, they've gone, guess what? Big reveal from Marvel's Eternals. And then fucking spoiled what is apparently the post credit scene of the film. Uh, fucking morons. So obviously there's some kind of, well, there is. We know what it is. There's a big reveal at the end of it. Um, and then naturally, because Variety has reported this, one of the three major trades in Hollywood, Everyone else starts reporting on it like it's fucking news. Yeah, well, when I when I texted texted <laughs> yeah. that to you, I'd be, I was watching the morning program yeah. on Channel Nine, which is our biggest TV channel yeah, yeah. in Australia, yeah. and the their, their, their you know movie reporter yeah. is reporting on it. Yeah, and they did I don't it. Know, mo- that's interesting. Apparently, they did it multiple times throughout the show. Someone did was like, "Yeah, really? I saw it." Yeah, so apparently, one of the I don't want to. I don't want to drag them because they're act, they're the news team that I really admire. I really like. I, I love the stuff that Channel Nine news team does. Yeah. Um. And I think they made an honest mistake where they just reported on something that had been reported as news. Yeah. Well, they get, they've got to get their information from somewhere, and exactly they've probably got right. it from Variety. They're exactly right. There's probably someone who was researching is on Twitter probably and seeing this yeah. stuff. And you see Variety reports it, you go, okay, this is news. And instead of actually researching into where this has come from, exactly what the hell is, you know, going mm. on, or how this information got out there, they just report on it like, oh, this is news. And apparently they did it multiple times. And, um, yeah, so they just nonchalantly was like, because the bit we saw was like just a news roundup. They were just rattling off a couple of bits of news. Yeah. And then in the Marvel Universe, big reveals from the Eternals. And they didn't even mention the Eternals. It just said, big yeah. news in the Marvel Universe today. Yep. Uh, so no one would have even got any warning, spoilers. Oh, this is from the Eternals. No, just fucking here's some Marvel news. Mm. I, kn- I sort of know I'm connected with um, one of the chief of staff at Channel 9. Yeah. And I was so close to messaging him being like, you have to be careful about this. But I was like, no, I you won't. Should no, I, I should have. I don't know. You I felt should have. I felt maybe it's not my place to do that. Um, but um, because only because um, one of the major PR agents at Disney, yeah. over in the US, who's well known, people know who he. People deal with him, and he's just he's just a well known guy. He's tweeted out on Twitter for the jerks who are openly tweeting eternal spoilers after being invited to the premiere tonight. Please know we see you. <laughs> so that came out very soon after the premiere. And then even after that, I mean, there's, 
Yeah, ch- you know, Channel 9 reported it, other news outlets reported it. By the end of the day, it was almost impossible to escape this because yeah. everyone was just reporting on it as if it was news. So <laughs> I well, really, certainly was. <laughs> yeah, I really hope that people out there did manage to avoid that. I feel like it's a big one that's going to be hard to avoid up to the film, but Gosh. do what you can. There's some yeah. big uh, eternal spoilers out there. Oh, uh, know. Yeah. A little bit of casting news we've got. We've been keeping a run up to date on the uh, new Christopher Nolan film, Oppenheimer. This is his first one away from Warner Brothers for a long time. He's doing this with Universal. Um, and, of course, uh, Killian Murphy, we reported last week, has been signed up for the title role mm-hmm. of uh, J. Robert Oppenheimer. That's right. Uh, Emily Blunt has joined the cast. God, she's in everything at the she's moment. She's doing everything, yeah. She's just splashing it around everywhere. Yeah. My God. Yeah. Good honour. So good. Uh, so she's joining the cast. Uh, this is from Deadline. Uh, sources say she will play the wife of J. Robert Oppenheimer, uh, the scientist who ran the Manhattan Project that led to the invention of the atomic bomb. The film will bow on July 21, 2023, uh, which is not that's typically safe for Nolan films, apparently. Um, but Deadline also says that they believe that the film is set to be uh, an, on, uh, an all-star ensemble. Ooh, who else? I don't know. But it's not surprising given it's Christopher Nolan. He's always got a ton of people in there. Yeah. But, yeah, don't know. So it's going to be interesting over the next few weeks. I'm to, actually looking, really looking forward to that. Yeah, me too. I like that whole story of Oppenheimer. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. His involvement in the yeah. A-bomb and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So that'll be really interesting to see. Yeah. And I think yeah. Cillian Murphy's a good choice too. Yeah. And, of course, we love Emily Blunt. Yeah, she's great. She's just she's great in, and everything. Just in fucking everything. <laughs> she's so fun. I've done that over, over, Jungle over, Cruise. over Exposer. No, I never. <sighs> now, people like her, just a, just a movie star. And you never get tired of them. <clears throat> Absolute movie stars. That'll be interesting to see what happens with that one. Yeah. Very exciting. Got a while to wait for it, though. Yeah, that is a little while off. That What did I say? July 21, 2023. Mm. Couple of years. 18 months. What's waiting for movies these days, really? Yeah, exactly right. With that, though, fucking hell. Hang on, actually. I was actually just about to close the show out, but fuck me. Uh, we actually have some breaking news. This has literally just come This has literally just come through. This has been sent in from James, who's a listener of the pod, yep. and a fucking hell. Um, earlier this after, earlier today what? when I was um, talking about uh, the that when I was actually researching the pod, the, this story had just come out from a set um, of this film that Alec Baldwin is filming uh, where they said there was some sort of accident on the set and two filmmakers had been um, had been injured, yep. taken to hospital. Um, it's, just come out, it's just come out now that um, apparently there was a, a misfiring of a, um, of a prop gun um, which has killed the cinematographer on, on the film. The film's called Rust. Uh, it's killed the cinematographer and it's wounded the director. Um, and it's just come out that Alec Baldwin, the star of the movie, was the one who fired the, oh, the gun. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, Alec, uh, this is a, a Variety article. Alec Baldwin fired a prop gun on a set in New Mexico on Thursday, causing the death of cinematographer uh, Helena Hutchins and wounding director Joel Souser. Incident occurred on the set of Rust, an independent feature that was filming at the Bonanza Creek Ranch, a popular production location south of Santa Fe. Hutchins, 42, was transported by helicopter to the University of New Mexico Hospital in Albuquerque, where she died. Uh, Souser, 48, was taken by ambulance to... Christus St. Vincent Regional Medical Centre in Santa Fe where he is undergoing treatment for his injuries. Yeah, Sheriff's Office has said in a statement that they were shot when a prop firearm was discharged by Alec Baldwin, uh, who's a producer and actor on, on, the, on the film. Uh, he's been questioned by investigators oh and was God. in tears, fucking naturally. Oh, you reckon? Um, no one was arrested, no charges have been filed. Detectives were interviewing witnesses and the incident remains under an open and active investigation according to the Sheriff's Office. Uh, Baldwin's reps did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Oh, my God, that's huge. That'd destroy the bloke. That'd oh, destroy yeah. her. Yeah. Wow. Um, that's not the first time that's happened on a set. No, no, that's, no, no. That's what killed Brandon Lee on the set of The Crow. Yeah, exactly. 
Um, yeah. I don't know what. Uh, that's uh, so. That's just come through. That's literally like just now. Um, so what's happened? Like, what happens? Does he? What happens if they file charges? They're, surely they can't file like manslaughter charges. It's not like like he's been given the weapon. This prop yeah, but he's a producer on it too. Oh, fuck yeah. So um, so the guy who killed accidentally killed Brandon, Brandon Lee. Uh, with the prop gun, Michael Massey. No, he he wasn't charged with anything. Says he, the district attorney who handled the case, um, filed that it was negligence on on the part of the film's crew, and um, didn't file. No charges were filed on that. And oh the guy, God. Michael Massey, uh, he was traumatized by the event. Naturally, returned to New York. And took a year off from acting and never saw the film. Twenty fifth in two thousand five, twelve years after the incident, Massey revealed that he still had nightmares about it. Go and say, I don't think you ever get over something like that. No, God, you wouldn't, would you? That's big. Fuck, wow. that's gonna have. I um, couldn't imagine that they could charge you. That's accidental. Well, yeah, again, I mean, like, well, in that case, in the Brandon Lee case, it was like improperly prepared. Yeah, um, prop gun. So you think the firing pin and everything would be taken out of a prop gun? And what I, the and what the hell came out of it? Yeah, has someone loaded it? I can't. Well, that's what Who happened knows? with the Brandon Lee one. They had to investigate whether it was actually like foul play or whether yeah. someone. Um, I can't exactly remember so what happened. Has he fired off one shot? Was it a shotgun? Was it a? Don't know. It's just a prop gun. Hmm. Um, you should hear it's uh, two people. Must have been like well, shot a scattergun shotgun. Well, yeah, who knows? Yeah, maybe. Shit, I, I, I don't. It doesn't. It doesn't say. But the brand. I don't know what happened with the gun. Um, with Brandon Lee, if I can, um, was loaded improperly with improperly made dummy rounds, cartridges from which the special effect crew had removed the powder charges. So in close ups, the revolver would show normal looking bullets. Right. So they'd been shooting close ups where right. it. But and then, uh, however, the crew neglected to remove primers from the cartridges for the fatal scene, which called for the revolver to be fired at Lee from a distance of uh, three point six to four point five meters. The dummy cartridges were replaced with blank rounds. When the blank round was fired, the bullet lodged in the barrel was propelled forward with almost the same force if the round were live, and it struck Lee in the abdomen. So that's how the Brandon Lee thing happened. Mm, so I'm imagining something similar, probably a similar thing. Uh, that's thrown me. That's gonna, well, yeah. That's going to have like all sorts of ramifications. Oh, huge! And, like down to down to OH and S on film sets and everything. How mm. the fuck does this happen in twenty twenty one on film set? Right. So I thought I thought that that they had to when they were firing at somebody. Yeah, it was wasn't actually aimed at them. It was, yeah. it was off. Yeah, you know, off axis sort of thing. Mm. And if it was the if yeah. it was the cinematographer and the director. So it must be pretty well. If it's a cinematographer, it could be a cinematographer who's also acting as a camera person, possibly. God, who knows? And the director it all must have been pretty. I don't know. I'm sure we'll hear more about this, but right now it's literally just Alec Baldwin has fired a prop gun, which has inadvertently killed uh, the cinematographer and injured the director. That's heavy. Shit. That's, a Shit. Heavy, That's he- pretty big. That's a heavy, That's really a heavy burden for him to carry the rest of his life. He's had some troubles in his life. Yeah, exactly right. That's it's just another another thing tough. for him. Jeez. Okay, so we should close the show out, though. It's massive. Yeah. Well, with that, though. Mm. We better close out the show. I didn't want to end on a, on a note like that, but naturally it comes in and report in the news. Yep. Uh, that is all we do have time for today, though. Thank you so much for listening. The podcast goes out every single Monday on all the podcasting platforms, including Apple uh, Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Audible. Uh, the visual element, semi-visual element, is available on YouTube, which goes out two days earlier to patron supporters. Videos are, of course, on their own separate channels, so like that, subscribe. Subscribe is the main thing, and watch them and like them. 
Uh, you can find me on YouTube at Dave Lee Down Under, over on Twitter, Instagram, links in the description of every podcast, um, and on the podcast platforms, all of that. If you want to write into the show, you can shoot an email to davelypod at gmail.com. I was going to say we cut the um, the co- subscriber questions segment. Yeah. It just goes over long. Uh, and the questions are becoming too much assigned. Yeah, exactly right. So, like, if you want to send in a question, send in a question on the email. Um, I, like I was when I was doing call ads for the questions, it was usually on YouTube, and it's mostly just people watching my YouTube videos asking about Cartoon Evolution stuff like that. It was really hard every week to pick out a decent question. Um, a lot of them were becoming the same. So, look, if you just have a question you want to send in, or you just want to say something to us, pump up our egos a little bit. <laughs> send in <laughs> a message. Pumping. Yeah, send in a message at DaveLeePod at gmail.com. If you're listening on the podcast platforms, please leave a review and a rating. Only good ones. No, only the good ones help. Don't want to be rocking in the corner. No. Uh, YouTube preview. Uh, I've just released my Gossamer, yeah, Looney Tunes Evolution, and The Voice Evolution. They've both gone out. It's doing quite well. Awesome. Doing better than James Bond, uh, mm. which was last month's one already. Um, did some cartoon news, a thing on the Diary of a Wimpy Kid trailer that Disney just put out. Um, Animaniac Season 2 trailer I've covered as well. Uh, this week I'm going to be doing, hopefully, if I can get the video done, Adam's Family Evil Cartoon Evolution. Ooh, let's I hope so. could get two Cartoon Evolution out this month. That's what I'm hoping Woo. for. Um I've done all the research, I just need to write it and make it. Gossamer only took me a week because it's a short one. This is also going to be a short one. I'm hoping I can have this one done and out by Halloween. Mm, if not, if not, I'll push it to next Halloween. Oh, cool. Can't do that. No, but anyway, uh, look, thanks to old mate. So, again, sorry that we've uh, had to uh, finish that way. Finish that way. Uh, it's a bit of a rocky show all over the place. Thanks for listening, and we will see you on the, and we will keep you up to date on what's going on with that. So, um, yeah, see you on the next one, guys. Take it easy. Take care, guys. <laughs>